and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on Casino Night Zone from Sonic 2. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Sonic 2 was my most played game growing up. My sister and I spent hours just playing Sonic 2 itself, but we also went into versus mode a lot and tried to get the jackpot on Casino Night Zone, making up little mini games for ourselves as we played it. I had originally drawn this months ago. You can actually see different paintings that are in here that I've done since I've resketched this. And this was okay. It felt a little basic and I wasn't thrilled with it. And I revisited the idea and started to sketch it out. Looking at different reference images, um, they actually put a Casino Night Zone in Sonic Generations. So I looked at that and that had some clouds in it which I thought were really cool. I really want to give this a pincushion distortion effect, where if you imagine everything was like a straight horizontal line and you curved the paper so things curved up and away from you, that's what I want to do here. So all of the clouds and these buildings that are far away are going to curve just a little bit to give some depth and distance to this piece. I need to draw all of that in first so I can see where my horizon line is going to go, even though it's going to curve a bit. And that way I can know exactly where the moon is going to sit so I can paint the sky from light blue all the way to a navy blue. Lately, I've found that I'm doing the sky twice. The first time to see exactly what I want to do, and then the second time to refine it. This time, the first time I did the sky, it was way too dark, a bit more saturated than I wanted, so I redid it with lighter colors and didn't get quite as dark towards the right side of the canvas. When it was dry, I drew in these curved lines to show exactly where the clouds are going. I'm trying to give this distortion to the space to make it look like it goes back even further where the moon is. So everything sits very low underneath the moon and then curves up towards the right side and just up a little bit on the left because there's not as much space here as there is over here. For the cloud itself, I'm going to be painting them a little like this. This was my test cloud, but it's too saturated. I didn't like it, so I'm adding a bit of burnt umber to all of my darkest colors to tone down that saturation so it's a bit more muted in color. I'm going to start with my middle to light blues, work my way into the dark purple. After it dries, add in the highlights on the side closest to the moon so I get that nice bright white for the clouds.
This first row of buildings was only difficult because of how tiny it is and how many buildings there are. It wasn't technically difficult. I started by figuring out about where my perspective mark was going to be, my vanishing point, and everything goes up on the top line here and then down on the bottom. So I made this wedge and then it goes out again on this side. And then I started to draw all of these buildings, generally trying to keep them in that space. Some of them go a bit taller so it looks more like a natural city or as natural as a city can be, and some of them are a bit shorter just to have that variation of buildings. Then I started to paint them. There's four different color buildings and um, some of them do like touch and get close to each other, but generally like no two buildings, like I didn't put two blue ones next to each other. So there's ultramarine blue, there's phthalo blue, there's violet, and there's also green. So those are the four colors I used. And I painted the tops of all those buildings with those colors. And then I added white and painted a little bit more down in the center and then more white towards the base and then even lighter colors towards the very bottom. So they look like they're glowing from all of the street lights. And then I took a paint marker and I started to fill in different windows trying to vary up the shapes, the directions, which windows were lit up, which ones weren't. I might add some color yet to these lights here, especially down near the base where there would be like neon signs and street signs. Maybe some red lights on the tops of buildings or the antenna, just to make it look more natural instead of all white lights. Now in my sketch, I had a second row of these buildings that were a bit bigger, so there were less of them, but I'm not sure I wanna do that yet. I'm going to be drawing in all of my larger buildings to see exactly where I want them to go and how much space I actually have, because my painting isn't exactly perfect for a ratio of where things are compared to my drawing. This is just a guideline of where things might go and how big they might be. So I need to draw all of the important buildings first to see if they fit, and then figure out exactly if I'm going to be doing the second row of buildings, how big it's going to be, and where it is. But while I'm working on that, I can also jump around and start to add other things in. Like if I want to add different color lights along the base of the first row, I can work on that too. I've been doing a lot of different things on various buildings. After I finished the first row of buildings, it just felt kind of empty with all the other ones that have detail drawn in. So I did a second layer, making them taller because you can see more of them when they're closer. And they still get tiny and far away at my vanishing point and get big again towards the outside. I also started drawing in some of these detailed buildings and giving them some details and figuring out where they're gonna be and the size they're going to be before I went and did all of the windows for these faraway ones. Doing the windows is really easy because I can use a paint marker and just start making circles or squares or whatever I'm doing. And I really want to get some of these big details finished because there's a lot of them and they have a lot of different things going on instead of sitting there with just a white paint marker putting dots for windows. So I'm gonna leave those alone for now while I finish some of the big things. And when the big things dry, I can go back and work on doing those windows. Now I'm sticking with a lot of the same colors, the phthalo, the ultramarine, into some dogzine purple for the violet buildings, just to keep the same color scheme. It's feeling very dreamscape and I really like that. 
I will be bringing in other colors because these are going to have red at the base and there'll be some red in some of these other detailed buildings, but I'm trying to keep the background similar in color scheme so they blend together and your eye gets drawn to the red parts or the yellow parts and all of the detail that's going to be here in the foreground. There hasn't been a lot to say about this painting, it's just filling in different colors and buildings and lots and lots of rectangles, but I wanted to talk about everything inside the second arch here. Um, a few of the things outside the arch is I added in some blue-gray for the moon so it wasn't just this orb of white in the sky. I added little bits of red in some of these background buildings just to give them some detail, but everything in the foreground for the most part is based on buildings in the game. This one is definitely based off a building in the game, as are these three here. 
Now this one isn't, I just added a cube there and I took the motif of the spade that is in the game and then I put it on that building because otherwise it floats in the sky and it looks a little strange, but I flipped it to make a heart for the other side of the building so I have the playing card motif going on. I'm still working on the casino, I'm letting it dry right now because I want to repaint the solid part here but I did the edge lighthouse pieces and started the block in the top. There's just a lot of little details with the casino and it's been very tedious to paint. The water tower is all set. I painted in white first and then the red and the white, or the red and the yellow for the lights going down the sides. So that's all set. And then once the casino is done, which is the majority of what's left of the painting, I just need to blur the bottom of this building and then the casino, just like the rest of Amar, and the whole piece will be done. So I'm just going to continue to try and repaint this and then add in all of the windows and the details of the casino, and then the casino will be done too. Everything is done except the crossbars for all of these windows. For the windows themselves, I did them this way first and I'm going to do the crossbars on top because it's really hard to do a gradient while you're avoiding something. So I just painted with the light ultramarine blue and then just got darker and darker towards the top of each window and then I can just paint that crossbar on top. I also did the mist on both of these bottoms of the buildings to make them blend into the foggy cloudy area for the ground but everything else is done. Like I said, I just have to do those crossbars. And we're done. We have Casino Night Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or bid on this original painting. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.